now we've got with us Mr. Simarjeet Singh, who is going to motivate us all with his words. He is a man known for his uh, influence on stage, his persona, his communication skills, and just the fact that he can inspire you with his words speaks volumes about his personality. Before I introduce him, let me you know read out a little bit about his work. Mr. Simarjeet Singh is a dynamic motivational speaker and performance coach who has fueled positive change for international audiences from students to business leaders. Simarjeet is known for creating interactive keynotes and workshops that engages his audience and invites them to be active participants in their own success. Ladies and gentlemen, I mean, the conversation that we're going to have with him today is about building creative confidence. And I'm pretty sure that his words are going to help all the students who are finding it difficult to maybe be it uh, speaking on stage or facing their bosses or uh, not being able to, you know, come up with creative ideas. So I think this conversation is going to help us a lot uh, in terms of understanding how to build confidence and how to live by it. Ladies and gentlemen, with a round of applause, please welcome Mr. Simarjeet Singh. Thank you so much. Uh, and I and as I gather from the conversation uh, earlier, I, I believe your name is Vishnu. Yes, sir. Your, your login name is appearing to be Vishali. Vishali has been interacting uh, with my team. I thank her. Yeah. I thank you, uh, Mr. Lakhanpal and everybody at LPU, the team behind this, for putting this together. The yes. uh, COVID situation has not dampened your spirits. I'm so very happy to see that. It's a pleasure to be part of the um, LPU's National Literary Fest 2020. And um, creative confidence is one of the topics that is very, very close to my heart because I believe we all have so much within us. Yes, kuch hai hamare andar. Just like, as you, you were introducing, you were saying that I'm going to inspire the audience with my words. I'm not sure about that. But what I am <laughs> sure about is yeah. that, um, you know, there's a fascinating word in the English language called discover. Yeah. Dis is to remove, do away with and cover. So to remove the cover is to discover. While hmm. we've come to believe that discover is discovering something new that did not exist before. The origins of the word, um, they speak otherwise and they say that to discover means something, something that was already there. Hmm. And now we've removed the cover of it. And I believe creativity is inherent to all of us. It's there within all of us. We just need to tap into it. We're all born with it. For everyone yeah. who's listening to this conversation live right now, if you're not sure, check with your parents. You've all come up with creative excuses to bunk classes, creative excuses why you could not complete your homework, etc. Um, and um, so we're all born with that spark of creativity. The big question is how to retain it as the years go by. So thank you, Vishnu and LPU team for having me. We did not even get a time to do an audio visual test. So I hope everything audio and sound quality and everything is okay at your end. Trust me, sir. It's the best I've seen. Oh, good. So, thank you. That means yeah. a lot. Thank you. Yeah. Right. So ladies and gentlemen, I think uh, we are going to have a great conversation. So if you are watching us live, you can write down your questions in the comment section as well. If you have any questions related to building confidence or if you want to ask a certain question to Mr. Simarjeet Singh, you can write down those questions in the comment section and I would be happy to ask him the same. Uh, but for now, sir, I have a lot of questions to you because I also belong to the you know, similar kind of field wherein I have to introduce people. And often at times, you know, we run short of words or that there are times when there is a creative block when mm -hmm. we're not able to proceed forward or we're not able to, you know, think about a certain thing and we're not able to find the right words to represent our feelings on a piece of paper or mm -hmm. when, we are, when we are speaking on stage. Right. How should one overcome that feeling? How, what, does this, what is the first immediate step that the person should take to come out of that creative block? Uh, one of the authors that I deeply admire is a gentleman called Seth Godin, and he writes mm -hmm. uh, about marketing per se, but I also believe that he writes a lot about self-improvement and creativity. And he said, he said, uh, why is that writing blog is more popular term than speaking block? Mm -hmm. why, why don't a lot of speakers somehow suddenly, you know, uh, are at a loss of words? It doesn't happen as often as a writing block, right? So agreed, agreed. My, my number one tip is, um, don't sit down with the expectation of, you know, something radically different is going to emerge right now. Let it flow as it normally would. Don't be too harsh on yourselves. Don't set expectations which are unreal and mm -hmm. go with the flow. And if you feel stuck, and I was speaking to somebody yesterday, I said, this is a mental situation. Feeling stuck is a state of mind, right? We yes. cannot be stuck on a planet that is whizzing thousands of miles per hour around its axis. And, you know, new planets are being created right right now. So 
Srishti kabhi bhi struck, stuck nahi hai. The universe is never stuck. I want to share yes, a wonderful sir. poem here, which is called The State of Mind. And the reason why I want to share it with you is, and with everybody who's watching is, um, is that feeling stuck is a state of mind. And you can train your mind to go into the state of flow. What Professor Mihai talks about, the state of flow. When a dancer mm -hmm. is dancing and they forget about time, or they forget about there is an audience, or a singer is singing and they close their eyes. If you've ever seen a singer singing, uh, some of the very good ones, you will see that they've now close their eyes and they are in their own world and they can hear their own sound in the headphones that they're wearing around their head and everything else, maybe even hundreds or millions of thousands of people who might be watching, they, they fade into the background. It's now them and they're suddenly in this magical state which is called flow. Suddenly they're not concerned about criticism or judgment of other people and that's a magical place to be in which we can train ourselves to go into that. This poem is by Walter D. Wintel. It's called A State of Mind. If you okay. think you are beaten, you are. If you think you are beaten, you are. If you think you dare not, you don't. If you like to win, but think that you cannot, it's almost a cinch that you won't. If you think you lose, you've lost. If you think you lose, you've lost. For out in this world we find, success begins with a fellow's will. It's all in a state of mind. If you think you are outclassed, and this is a big, big challenge for people who are coming with some sort of, um, any sort of a self-judgmental um, complex of, you know, I'm not good enough, or I don't come, you know, how could I be writing in English for someone who did not study in an English medium school? This line is for you. These lines are for you. If you think you are outclassed, you are. You've got to think high to rise. You've got to be sure of yourself before you ever win a prize. Life's battles don't always go to the stronger or the faster man. Or in this case, the more learned man, since we are at the lit fest. <laughs> Life's battles don't always go to the stronger or the faster man. But sooner or later, the person who wins is a person who thinks he can. But sooner or later, that the person who wins is a person who thinks she can. So it's a lot about self-worth. Every day, take out the time to say to yourself, I am enough. I am enough. I deserve to be here. I deserve to be a part of this, right? Don't beat yourself up. Don't be your own worst enemy. When it comes to creative confidence, I think the number one hurdle is the one that we set for ourselves. We beat ourselves up. You know, we, that critic inside is the harshest of all. So learn to silence this critic. And if you're ever short of ideas, if, if that was, that is part of the question, um, step back from the screen, step back from the writing desk, go take a walk, have a cup of tea, have a cup of coffee, um, in, in, do something that breaks, that refreshes that state of mind, do some gardening, uh, listen to some uplifting music and um, sleep if you want to. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Red Bull does not fuel creativity, sleep does. <laughs> yeah. Sleep does. It's, it's always sometimes you don't need more caffeine in order to get better ideas. Sometimes you just need to uh, press the reset bus button and the yeah. most powerful reset button ever is, is a good night's sleep. So switch off those devices and just get a good night's rest. And now reframe again, one of the very powerful tools when you, whenever you're stuck is reframe. Perhaps you were looking at that thing that what you want to write or what you want to talk about very, very narrowly, but reframe, look at it from another perspective. Uh, I call it divergent thinking. Divergent thinking is, you are trying to think of multiple possibilities of how to address that thing, multiple possibilities, right? And yeah. so maybe you were thinking very linear and that's why you're feeling stuck. You were ekhi rasta tha, wo maine paragraph likhna tha, ya article likhna tha, speech prepare karni thi. I had that singular way forward, singular way forward. And now that is not working out. So suddenly I'm giving up, right? But how about there are hundred multiple different directions you could approach it from. So that should help. Absolutely agreed, sir. I uh, love the word divergent thinking mm. and I, I, I also I think believe that you know there are times when we fail to understand our audience you know, you know like if, if you are writing mm. a certain uh, script or if you are trying to present a certain sort of presentation or mm. if you are initiating a conversation in a strange group where we have not met any of the person or people at, right. that, at that particular point of time, we try to judge the audience as to what they are, what they like, or what are the things that might, you know, impress them. Right. How do you approach this process of judging or analyzing the audience? What are the key, key steps that one needs to follow when he is or she is analyzing the audience? 
Great question. Great question, Vishnu. Um, I believe creativity is courage. The first thing that creativity is courage because creativity is emerging from your critical thinking. Creativity and bhakti nahi hai. Creativity is critical thinking. It's trying to come arrive at your own conclusions. So it requires courage. It requires to think, say, produce, create things which other people may not agree with, which mm -hmm. other people may laugh at, or which may be ahead of time for everybody else, right? So they cannot understand it. Right? जो चीज अपने समय से पहले आती है उसको भी वो क्या था मुझे वो थिंकर का नाम नहीं जिनको जहर का प्याला पीना पड़ा इसलिए बिकॉज ही वॉज सेइंग दैट सॉरी Galileo Galilei, right? Yeah, Who said yeah. that the sun is at the center of the universe? Yes. And, you know that the whole debate and the church was against it. So creativity yeah. is courage. And the first thing anybody who wants to actually develop the creativity is to understand: you don't have to play to the masses because then, then that popularity thing is is a trap because it's here today and it'll be gone tomorrow. Right? If you are doing whatever you are content produce kar rahe, digital, hai, written, hai, whatever way or form, you are writing a book, you are creating a video. If you are thinking from this perspective, what is going to happen? What is going to happen? What is going to sell? And then you are, um, the world will be at loss because some of your beautiful music, you may never create it because yeah. you are playing to the masses. You are after popularity and fame, these sort of things. And they are fickle. And let's look at the successes in any, any field, whether it's writing or music or other fields. It's sometimes somebody dares to be original. And all of a sudden, yeah. they have great, tremendous uh, commercial success also. And then what yeah. happens? So many others line up. I've also got to do what that person is doing. I want to replicate his success. That yeah. is the wrong strategy, wrong strategy. He or she is successful precisely because they believed in the uniqueness of their ideas. And hmm. therefore, you must do the same. You must also follow your creative ideas. I think the famous Sufi philosopher Rumi, he said it beautifully, unfold your own myth. Do not be um, in awe of the stories that have come before you. Learn from those stories. Be inspired from those stories of the achievement of other people. But do not try to replicate them. Unfold your own myth. Unfold your own journey. And that will be your gift to the world. And have courage to believe in it, even if other people don't. And that's really important here. All right, sir. I'm trying to get a little personal here by asking mm -hmm. this question. You know, you are extremely confident, uh, super energetic when you are presenting yourself. But there must have been time where you were not this person. You were not this Simurji that you are today. And uh, I think there must have been certain challenges as well that you must have faced in your career. Mm -hmm. there, were, there were times maybe when you did not feel confident enough to go up on stage and speak, you know, right. with full confidence. How did you deal with that particular situation? And what were, what was or what is uh, an inspiring tale from your past that you'd like to share that uh, has helped you in your life? Sure, uh, Vishnu. Uh, the the first time I stood up to speak, my brain sat down. <laughs> 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 but yeah. if I may, if I may answer this question poetically uh, by a poem from Khalil Gibran, the Lebanese poet, uh, yep. it's called "Defeat." Mm -hmm. Because I've learned from all these experiences, all these adversities, all these challenges, they've made me who I am today. And 13 years, just for the record, 13 years, full time, wow. this is all wow. I've been doing. I've been trying to work on my craft and develop my craft. But my defeats and setbacks, they've taught me. Defeat my defeat, my solitude and my aloofness. Mm -hmm. Defeat my defeat, my solitude and my aloofness. You are, you are dearer to me than a thousand triumphs. Hmm. Defeat my defeat, my solitude and aloofness. You are dearer to me than a thousand triumphs and sweeter to my heart than all world glory. Defeat hmm. my defeat, my self-knowledge and my defiance. Through you, I know that I am yet young and swift of foot and not to be trapped by withering laurels. And in you, I have found aloneness and the joy of being shunned and scorned. Defeat my defeat, my shining sword and shield. In your eyes, I have read that to be enthroned is to be enslaved. Powerful lines. Yeah. To be enthroned is to be enslaved. To be understood is to be leveled down. And to be grasped is to, be, is to but reach one's fullness. And then like a ripe fruit to fall and be consumed. Defeat and defeat my bold companion. You shall hear my songs and my cries and my silences. And none... And none but you shall speak to me of the beating of wings and the urging of the seas and of mountains that burn in the night. And you alone, defeat you alone, shall climb my steep and rocky soul. Defeat my defeat, my deathless courage. 
you and I shall laugh together with the storm, and together we shall dig graves for all that die in us, and we shall stand in the sun with a will, and we shall be dangerous, and we shall be dangerous. My defeats, my adversities, they have taught me a lot, as uh, poetically, beautifully shared by Khalil Gibran in this poem. Uh, but it's been a learning curve, yes. Uh, I've been there in that state of mind of feeling underprepared, underconfident, or that I don't fit in here. I've walked into a room with people who, whose experience was more than the age or my age at that point of time. I started wow. professional speaking at the age of 27, mm -hmm. and I would walk into a room of CEOs or senior executives, um, 55 plus, 60 plus, they would have spent more time in the industry than I spend more time on this planet. So of course there <laughs> is self-doubt. Of course there are yeah. so many challenges, of course, but you overcome them. And how do you overcome them? You overcome them with authenticity. You overcome them with authenticity. Learn to be authentic about, um, you don't have to put on a facade of, uh, I know it all. Uh, yeah. Understand that you're a student uh, along the way and you're sharing what you believe in. So belief and conviction can even come from a five-year-old or a seven-year-old. Some life-changing information can come from a little kid also. So people who respect this, they are the sort of the company that you want to keep. And the critics will always be there. But remember, no statue was ever built to honor a critic. I don't know who said these words. They're not mine. Mm -hmm. uh, but we posted them yesterday. Uh, it's a popular quote. I, I can't think of the author right now, but it's very popular. No statue was ever built to honor a critic. So sing your song because people are going to criticize anywhere. Do what you have to. Perfect, sir. I think that is going to inspire a lot of students as well. Uh, I think this this session is also helping helping them take away a lot of uh, names I, as I, I believe that they're going to enjoy reading khalil or rumi or uh, the many other authors names that you've taken up, up front out here but i want to ask you this who is your personal favorite when it comes to you know literature since this is national literary festival of lpo i wanted to know who's your favorite author and uh, what is one book that inspires you the most uh, Khalil Gibran's Prophet uh, definitely is on top of the list. Um, and along with, uh, if we talk about literary books, Man's Search for Meaning uh, by Viktor Frankl is a story of the Holocaust. Uh, not poetry, but again, a first-hand account of the struggle of one individual. Mastery by Robert Greene, again, full of stories how different people became uh, came at the top of their game, um, you know, by overcoming so many things. Um, the Bhagavad Gita for detachment and uh, to learn how to follow your um, uh, karma to do what you have to do to become an action-oriented person. Shri Guru Granth Sahib for inspiration and the Gurbani every day for daily inspiration. Not just uh, uh, rote repetition, but also to understand the meaning so that they touch your soul and so that you become a stronger individual in the process. You overcome your flaws, which we all have. Um, and I also believe that inspiration, um, you should allow it to flow from everywhere. You should be like a sponge to soak mm -hmm. in inspiration from all different directions. You see, the farmer in the fields is a huge source of inspiration for me. So what was barren and what was dry and what was a wasteland. I have this piece of land that our office overlooks and it was full of, um, it, yeah. it, it had popular trees and now the trees have been harvested. And now just in a matter of five or six days, these hardworking farmers have now prepared the land. It is ready for cultivation. They will be planting wheat very shortly, which will make our daily bread. And that's inspiration. You know, somebody's up at 4 a.m. in the morning just to water the fields. Look at that. There's a lady who works in our um, in our colony. She's she, she's a she works in different houses to assist people with their household chores, and she has arthritis. She has arthritis, Vishnu, and she must be 75 plus. Last night at 10 10 30, I saw her. Just she was limping. She was limping back to her home, but she didn't have a frown on her face. She was not regretting wow. her life. She was not cursing. These they, these are inspiration. The writers, the architects, the creators. So many people who put things together, who add some value to the world, and that's really really important. If I may mention Rabindranath Tagore here, India's Nobel laureate, who said, uh, "Spring has passed, and summer has gone, and winter is here." And the song that I wanted to sing remains unsung because I have spent my days stringing and unstringing my instrument. Because I have spent my days stringing and unstringing my instrument. Please do not make this mistake of spending the peak of your life just stringing and unstringing your instrument. Go sing your song. Don't die with your music inside you, as Dr. Wayne Dyer would say. Sing your music and you'll find your audience, just like the birds in the forest. They don't care if there is an audience that appreciates or not. They sing their song and we should take inspiration from them too. Absolutely, I agree to you, sir. And uh, I think 
there are a lot of students who are asking this question as to uh, you know how a student or an individual should approach public speaking because public speaking is a vast field wherein there are so many things that one needs to take care of be it confidence mm. modulation body language expressions now there is no platform uh, you know where students can uh, you know literally practice or the only advice that they generally get is read books and uh, stand in front of the mirror and practice the speech Mm -hmm. but what are the pro tips that you can give to the students that can actually help them become a better public speaker and can motivate them to you know speak words that they truly believe i think for there's two parts to this if i it's it's a long it could be a whole master class but if if i answer it in in a couple of minutes i would say there's two parts to this process one is the internal one is the external you've got to do a lot of internal work in refining your ideas and clarifying your ideas what do i really want to convey what am i here for what value do i want to add to this interaction right that's internal work writing helps and and brief writing uh, brevity actually helps a lot especially if you want to put it down what you want to say in a couple of sentences mm-hmm. that will you will have to chop away a lot of the fluff and once the fluff goes away your actual thing emerges right so writing your ideas helps but don't be scripted so one is the internal part and then is the external part when you're actually presenting so you you're not a robot don't expect too much perfection from yourself and don't set unrealistic targets but and be authentic um and be comfortable be in your own skin don't mm. try to be someone else if person xyz that you admire he or she is jumping when they are speaking that does not mean you need to do that you should be yeah. doing what you feel comfortable with okay your comfort your presence is most important because when you're present in the moment wonderful ideas will emerge yeah i think that's worth repeating when you're present in the moment you will you may have prepared a lot of notes earlier but you will see the beauty of that preparation is now you will have an aha moment when you're on stage in front of the audience you will come up with something that you never thought was possible right and that's all because you're absorbing in feedback from the audience you're looking at their faces there's interaction and also at the same time you are uh, your neurons are firing in multiple ways so not only the way the path that you had prepared so don't memorize that's a mistake that a lot of youngsters do your opening closing it does not have to be perfect it has to be authentic it has to be creative and humor please for god's sake we need humor <laughs> we need yeah. yes yes and we need um, start with the you know poor pjs if you have to but come up with something and slowly you'll develop a sense of humor because um, public speaking in india is associated a lot in many parts of the world for that matter is is a pretty serious uh, game right humor is looked down upon but um bring in the human element that's what i mean agreed sir totally agreed to you i i think uh, you know we've got our next uh, dignitary as well so i would you know not bother you for long sir i'll ask you one final question that i have in my head and Go. that question uh, is what should one do what are the exercises that one should have in uh, their daily life to improve confidence to instill that sense of uh, you know i can do it uh since we're talking about creative confidence and I'll be brief here because we don't want to uh, keep our next guest waiting um to improve your creative confidence uh publish more mm. take it to the end audience more than you are at the moment right don't keep it i so with our videos for example i say to my team every day it's better on youtube than it is on your hard disk don't keep it on your hard disk publish yeah. it's just oh we got it this is not perfect publish you know as much as you can within reasonable uh, limits of course <laughs> yeah uh, but take your material whatever it is if you're writing poetry publish it share it um you paint publish it share it hold an art exhibition sell it online right don't don't be afraid of this last step and this last step is what holds a lot of people back is um they they're very creative but they're poor at execution if you're poor at execution team up with somebody who's who has strong execution who will come back and say sir we've got to do that we've got to publish that blog or we've got to you know you've got to write the next chapter of your book or whatever that happens to be commit to action because ideas don't change the world actions do so take action on whatever your most important priorities are publish absolutely sir and uh, i think with that we would want uh, the students out here to acknowledge the presence of madam sana k gupta as well i think she's joined our chat out here so uh, ladies and gentlemen this is uh, 
Simarjit Singh, who gave a wonderful you know, insights about building creative confidence. And I hope that you're all going to check him out on his YouTube channel and his Facebook page as well. And you're going to follow him on all the social media platforms because his words definitely uh, would make your day better. And I hope that you know, his words will travel far and reach out to millions of people who need them. And so we believe that you're going to come to help you as well. And you're going to speak on the stage of uh, ours and you're going to inspire students to you know, perhaps be a very good speaker and be an original speaker. And be themselves, most importantly. Thank you for organizing this. I wish you all the best. And to the next speaker, I, I say goodbye now. Take care. Bye. Thank you.